For those of us who drink tea, brace yourselves. There are bug traces in our tea. There are ridiculous lot of invertebrate traces in our cup of tea, according to scientists. We biological beings are messy things, leaving bits of our former selves behind everywhere we go, even in the air. This trail of self induces, includes various secretions like saliva, discarded waste, and are constantly shedding outer layers like dead skin cells, many of which contain our unique DNA signatures. Bugs are no exception. From spiders to beetles, invertebrates also leave a snail trail of evidence in their wake, including over any growing tea leaves they may have munched on or even just brushed by. Scientists have just detected evidence of a staggering 1,200 different species of invertebrate and only 40 samples of dried teas and herbs. So it's also on the herbs, like oregano, dried, uh, what should we say, parsley. I used to use a lot of that in New York, dried parsley, dill, okay? Now, whatever, what really surprises me was the high diversity we detected. This is what Trier University Ecologist geneticist Henrik Krahenwinkel told Shauna Williams at The Scientist. He said, we found in green tea up to 400 species of insects in a single tea bag. In total, researchers found the trials of the trails of 3,246 invertebrates, including predators, herbivores, detritivores, and parasites from around the world. In the samples of commercially produced teas and herbs bought in German grocery stores, there were DNA traces of spiders, cockroaches. You know, as I was saying this, I'm <laughs> wondering what the result is to our human bodies. Okay, and, and also if it's also if this is also found, I guess it's not found in coffee because coffee the beans have to be roasted and then uh, obviously would kill any traces of whatever could be there. I mean, it's cooked, so the coffee bean is cooked, so that's better than drinking. <laughs> ah, the tea from the tea leaves where all these little beasties were, uh, you know, munching on or, or uh, you know, bumping into. So there were DNA traces of spiders cockroaches, <laughs> mites, flies, butterflies, mantids, and lots more. Crahan Winkle and colleagues suspect the stunning diversity is due to how the dried herbs, like these are tea leaves, mint, parsley, dill, etc., are processed as they are ground up. The DNA from all parts of the field where the crops are grown likely includes some stray whole bugs and even their eggs get preserved mixed and spread through the entire batch. The resulting environment, that's not funny, even their eggs. The resulting environmental DNA, eDNA, provides the researchers with enough information to pinpoint where the plants were grown, as well as a snapshot of the invertebrate biodiversity present in the area. This is enough to take you off key altogether. Unless you grow it in your little pot in your home, and you know what brushes against it, you know. So I guess we'll, we'll go off tea, go on to coffee, you know, because the, the coffee beans are cooked and then ground up. Now, uh, the team wrote in their paper, dried plant material appears ex excellently suited as a novel tool to monitor anthropods and arthropod plant interactions, detect agricultural pests, and identify the geographical origin of imported plant material. However, they caution, quote, while our eDNA approach represents an important development for arthropod monitoring, it should be noted that it is not free of biases and will require further standardization in the future, end quote. For example, scientists will not, do not yet know if certain species would go undetected because they, they uh, leave less of a genetic trail behind on these plants, despite being prevalent in the surrounding environment. Regardless, this method clearly provides a lot of information 
that we could not easily access before, so it could be used to simplify environmental monitoring, then possibly even help expand species records back through time using museum herbarium species specimens. Plant collections in museums, could they actually be useful to understand how insect communities have changed, asked Karen Winkle in The Scientist. When insect decline studies were first published, a lot of people complained that there is no real long-term data. Karen Winkle and the team are now working on this to try to find out. Hopefully these records are obtainable as we all really uh, they rely on insects and other vertebrates to help run our life support system, our natural environment, with massive environmental upheaval already underway. Reading tea leaves really could provide us with some vital information. Oh, what can I tell you? This is shocking. The research was published by in a biological record letters, and this is by Tessa Kumuduro on Science Alert. I, I learned. I am shocked. Now they don't tell us, you know. Okay, the tea you put it in hot water, and uh, the tea just sort of uh, soaks in there before you drink it. They don't tell us if the hot water is hot enough to uh, kill whatever is in there. You know, as far as uh, insect eggs and uh, whatever else uh, is in there with the tea bags. Um, I guess, you know, uh, okay, I, I like using a lot of oregano on my salad and meat, you know, oregano, but uh, on the salad, of course, the oregano is not cooked, but in the meat, in the, in the oven, it's cooked. But the thing is, um, oregano, from what uh, I read, has 16 the time, times the vitamin C that, that fruits have. So it's very rich in vitamin C. But again, you've got all these traces of whatever insects are on there. So that's the news about the tea bags and the bugs. Uh, please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.